sure on November 8th we keep it that way? Yeah. Have any of you voted yet? Yeah. How many of you are waiting till Election Day? Yeah. Anybody going to vote early voting in person? Yeah. It's all good. It all works. And so just make sure you get it in. We're really excited uh, to be here. I want to thank uh, Julio Fuentes. I would appreciate the endorsement. Look. Every governor had to make decisions over the last couple years. How do you want to handle it? We wanted Florida to be open and free, and that's exactly what we delivered. And you think about how terrible some of the people in some of these other states were treated, you know, over the last few years. Um, not even allowed to operate businesses, schools being closed for a year, not allowing access. Obviously, that hurts low-income families and working-class families. You know, the politicians and the bureaucrats that would lock down the schools, they would send their own kid to in-person private school most of the time. And so it was a total fraud, but it was very, very devastating what was done. And then you had other states that wanted to force people uh, to take COVID vax or lose their jobs. Or... Or... Some even want to force kids to do it as a per to be able to go to school. Well, in Florida, uh, as long as I'm around, we will never have COVID shot mandates. And, you know, the thing is the CDC just added this to the immunization schedule. I mean, first of all, it's all politics with these people, and they are owned lock, stock, and barrel by Big Pharma. I think the CDC is basically, and the FDA, they are basically subsidiaries of Pfizer at this point, to be honest. And, you know, so it's, a, it's, it's ridiculous what's going on. We actually, in Florida, with our Surgeon General, Dr. Joseph Ladapo, have said... We said uh, as a state, you know, for uh, parents with these with, with kids, and my kids are 5, 4, and 2, but he ain't really anything under 18, um, there's no proven benefit to this, okay? So we recommend against, you know, you're free to make different decisions, but at the end of the day, it used to be you had to show a proven benefit, and now it's just they want to do. And the reason why they want to do, I think, with the kids is because they want to maintain liability protection for the pharmaceutical companies. And I think it's a huge mistake to give them liability protection because they have no incentive to be honest about some of the things that may happen. So um, we knew, though, that this could be an issue even though this is now just happening. Now the fear is, okay, since it's on the schedule, school districts are going to start mandating this like some of these other vaccines that have been around for like 50, 60 years. And um, you don't have to worry about that in Florida, partially because we saw this as a potential last year, and we banned it in Florida. So they can't. I want to thank uh, Dr. Juan Carlos Amnesty for having us here at Central Christian University. Look forward to working uh, with Carolina Amnesty in the Florida House of Representatives. And I think Fred Hawkins is here. I hope you guys can help him get back to the Florida House. And then, I don't know if he's here, but a congressman from Central Florida will be Corey Mills. will be able to be here. There he is. Okay. Very important. Honestly, like, you don't take anything for granted, but I think they know they can't beat him. And so they're not putting up much of a fight. But um, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, we've got a lot of opportunities over the next couple weeks. Uh, don't let anyone tell you that somehow this election's in the bag or get complacent about anything. Because we were half a percentage point away in 2018 from having a much different course for the state of Florida. And it's not even just the typical stuff. I mean, you know, it would have ended up being uh, woke politics on steroids shoved down your throat 24-7. And that just would have been the norm. But then when COVID hit, 
uh, this state would have been governed like California, New York, and all those failed states. You absolutely would have had punishing lockdowns. Kids would not have been able to access in-person education. You would have had COVID shot mandates uh, for working and all these other, there would have been vaccine passports in the state of Florida. Can you imagine how bad that would have been? So all that would have happened and it would have been basically the worst aspects of California and New York politics imposed here in the state of Florida. But here's the thing, you know, we were that close to having it. Don't act like that that can't happen in the future. It absolutely can happen in the future if we don't do our part and come out big you know, over the next couple of weeks. So, I think people get it. I think people understand. I think they are more appreciative of who their governor is today than four years ago because they know the difference that it made in terms of leadership. And that's at the end of the day what you're talking about. I mean, you can obviously you want someone you agree with, uh, but who has the courage of their convictions? Who's going to be able to stand up for you when nobody else is doing that? The media ain't going to stand up for you. The left ain't going to stand up for you. We know all that. So you got to have someone in there that's fighting for you. And in order to do that, you got to be willing to lead. And when I became governor, I said, I'm not taking polls. So no polls since I've been governor. I don't want ask to know finger in the wind to try to figure out whether what I'm going to do is going to be popular or not, because I don't think that's the role of a leader. I could take a poll of this room right now on an issue, and that doesn't tell me anything. What, what really is important is if you as a leader set out a vision, if you execute on that vision and you deliver results for people, then what would the poll look like? That's the idea of the So we said we're going to lead from conviction and we're going to do what we think is right, uh, regardless of, uh, of all the, the different chatter that's out there, because it doesn't bother me, it doesn't affect me. You know, I'm, uh, if, uh, I, they attack me when I roll out of bed in the morning. And honestly, it's good feedback, because if they're not attacking me, I think I must be doing something wrong. I, I hope I'm. So we knew that you had to do it. We knew that you had to, to lead, and, and and we knew that you know there's going to be times when you got to run into the fire, and you got to be there, and you got to be able to take that. And so we were able, to, of course, do that during COVID. I mean, a lot of what we did really opened the door for other states to follow through. Because I would take all the flack, and then they could do what Florida was doing, and it wasn't as big. And that's fine, and I don't mind that. And in fact, you know, I viewed it as. If uh, they're going to come after me and, and throw shoot arrows at me, fine. I would much rather them come after me than come after you. I would much rather... I would much rather govern worried about saving your jobs than being worried about saving my own. I was willing to let the chips fall where they may. And as a result of just standing for truth, standing for facts, and not letting the state be overwhelmed with fear and hysteria, you know, we now have more jobs in the state of Florida than we did prior to COVID. We have way more jobs than when I became governor, and we had, we had a lot. Our economy actually grew in the most recent quarter. The U.S. as a whole declined in the most recent quarter. We added almost 50,000 jobs last month. You know, we, if you look at the numbers overall for the country, uh, Biden should be sending me and Texas and some of these other states thank you notes because we're pulling all the weight. So we've been able to do that. Our workforce is growing. People have come to want to invest in Florida uh, like never before. We have the largest budget surplus in the history of the state of Florida by a country mile. We are, in the most recent budget, 
we did the biggest tax relief package in the history of the state of Florida. And, um, and we're going to do more going forward. Because if you think about uh, us, all the success we've had, then you have two years ago, you've got this uh, administration come in. And what do they do? They declare war on American energy production. And so you now see, not just at the gas pump, although I will say we put in right now, there's a, uh, a fuel tax holiday for Florida fuel tax. So we have the fifth lowest gas in the country. I know it's going up everywhere, but at least we're better than most. But they, but they decide to wage a war on American energy. They say we need to new, you know, do, do renewables and all this stuff. Look, we do more solar than most, most every state, but it is not a substitute to have windmills or some of these things for, for traditional energy. You just can't power an economy and a society based on that. So he's cut back on oil, cut back on gas. The prices have gone, and natural gas has gone through the roof. I mean, that is, and really, you know, utility bills are more for natural gas than anything right now. So you see that in everything people do. And then what is their response to that? Is it to realize that that was a bad policy and to open up? No. It's to beg Maduro for oil or to go to OPEC and ask them, please don't cut production. You know, and the Saudis, they cut production, and people say, well, the Saudis are playing politics, doing it right before the election to hurt Biden. And you know what? They probably are. I mean, they don't like him. He's playing footsie with Iran. And so they probably are doing that. But what I would say is if we were energy independent, it wouldn't matter what the Saudis did. You could do whatever you want. The other thing they did was they printed and spent and borrowed trillions and trillions of dollars coming in, and they said basically it was to rescue America because of COVID. But, you know, Florida was open. We were booming. I mean, we had tax revenue coming in, and it was a historic mistake. And the thing is, they were warned about it by economists on the left, not just re Republicans. People that worked for Bill Clinton and, and these other Democrat presidents said, if you do this, you are going to spark a major inflation. And that's exactly what has happened. Biden and his policies and Pelosi, they have fueled this inflation. When you're paying more at the grocery store, you thank Joe Biden. When you're paying more for bills and everything else you do, you thank them because they are the ones that brought this to the United States of America. And I just think November 8th is a chance that we get to express our disapproval with what they're doing. So you've got that, and so, so you know, now in Florida, we're looking at, say, okay, um, you know, we obviously, our budget's $109 billion. I mean, they're doing trillions and trillions. Like, we're, we're budget dust in Florida for what we do compared to that. So, you know, we can't compete with the Federal Reserve doing trillions or Biden or Congress. But what we can do is say, okay, you have this inflation. First of all, they said there would be no inflation. Then they said it was transitory. Then they said it was going to peak seven months ago. Then they said it's going to start slowing. And it really is hot as ever in many of these important things. So, um, so it's going to be with us a long time until we get some, some new leadership. So what, what can we do in Florida? So what we're going to do is look at the biggest tax relief that we've ever done in Florida history. I just did the biggest. This is going to be much bigger than that. And I'm just thinking, okay, we don't have an income tax, thank God, and we never will as long as I'm here. So I can't, so you can't cut income tax rates, boy. So how do you do it? So I said, you know, when there's inflation, People have to make choices so that you may cut back on entertainment, you may cut back on some stuff. There's some things you just can't cut back on. Like, you know, when a price goes up, you got to eat it, basically. So we're trying to find relief from that. So one of the things you have to do uh, is most people have to commute to work. they got to show up at work. they got to do it. So we are going to slash tolls by 50%. <laughs> Hundreds of dollars a month in tolls. 
So you're going to end up having people in Florida, Central Florida, South Florida in particular, you know, you're going to have people save over $1,000 on tolls. And what we're going to do... And, and the way we're going to do it, the, the tourists are still going to... We're going to charge them full freight. Uh, so, so the way they'll do it is it, it'll be full freight. You go through in your sun pass and they will rebate half of your tolls every month. So that's the way it goes. Another thing that you can't really find a way around is, you know, if you're taking care uh, of babies and young kids, you got certain expenses with that. And so what we did in this past budget, we did a one-year holiday for things like diapers and wipes and baby clothes with no tax. So no sales tax on any of that. You know, when I first became governor, we had a two-year-old and a nine-month-old. Now it's five, four, and two. So the five and four are long out of diapers. Two is kind of on the border. And my wife said, why did you wait till your fourth year to do tax-free diapers? <laughs> well, it, it, it is what it is. But so we saw that, and that's, that's, I think people appreciate it. But then I said, okay, you know, this is fine, you know, to do it for a year. But there's more than just the, the diapers and all that. I mean, cribs, strollers, incredibly expensive how much some of this stuff is. So we are going to do permanently no sales tax on all those baby items. Cribs, strollers, diapers. And you got to. I mean, look, these are things that you got to do. Uh, certainly when it comes to things like diapers, it's not an easy workaround, so you got to eat those costs. So we're going to take away the tax on that. I think that will be a big deal. And then the other thing people have to do, uh, they've got to take care of their pets, so we're doing tax-free on all pet food. I think that will be really good. So we're going to make we're going to make a little bit dealing with Biden inflation a little bit easier in the state of Florida, and we're happy to be able to do that. And we're going to continue doing uh, doing what's right. You know, one of the reasons, if you think about Florida, and just understand, like I, I'm just trying to do a good job. I'm not like begging people to move or anything like that. But it's a free country, and people do move, and they leave states that are governed basically by leftist politicians that run it into the ground. And then they come uh, come to Florida. How many of you have moved to Florida within the last four years? Okay. <laughs> you escaped California. Okay. God bless you. So, uh, of those who are new within the last four years, how many of you would have moved to Florida if I had not been elected? Would any of you have still done it? No hands. Okay. So... It's just something, honestly, you know, I've been helping, I mean, since we've had Hurricane Ian, that's been all consuming, but before that, you know, I took a couple trips to help other governor candidates across the country, because the fact of the matter is, the outcome of governor's races in other parts of the country actually affects Florida. For example, like you look in Georgia, you, know, you have uh, the governor camp running against Stacey Abrams. <laughs> You know, the media doesn't cons call her an election denier, even though she didn't accept. But, I, and, and look, I think, I think, I think the governor is going to win. I think it's going to be good in Georgia. But I will say this. If she were to win, that would absolutely spark refugees from Georgia to Florida. No question. It actually would do that. And you look at some of these other places across, um, you know, California, we actually saw more people move once the recall of Newsom failed. They were hoping to get the recall. They didn't. And so then people picked up and said, you know what, I'm done. So this stuff has an impact on Florida because they see if you elect people that are going to implement proven poor policies that will not work, they're not going to sit there and accept the abuse. And one of the reasons why people... So anyway, so we've led the country in net in-migration uh, since COVID. We've had more wealth move into Florida than has ever moved into a state in the similar time period in American history. And But people will ask me, they'll say, wait a minute, they're coming from California. I remember, look, I was born and raised in Florida. I never saw California license plates until very recently. 
we start seeing the California license plates, and it spooked a lot of Floridians because they're thinking, how are these people going to vote? Well, here's what I can tell you. When I got elected governor four years ago, there were close to 300,000 more registered Democrats in the state of Florida than Republicans. And before I became governor, never in Florida history have we had more registered Republicans than registered Democrats. Never before. My goal was, you know, maybe uh, over my first term as governor, maybe we can reach parity in voter registration. That was a pretty ambitious goal, to go from two set whatever it was, you know, to get almost 300,000 in the other direction on net. And don't forget, they're still trying to register people too, so it's not like they're static, so, you, so it's tough. So we said we wanted to do it by November of 2022. Well, we did it by November of 2021. We caught that in voter registration. Then, so then I'm thinking like a year, a little bit more than a year ago, I'm thinking like, man, I think we're going to be able to be up, you know, 50,000, 100,000 by the time the 2022 November election comes around. Well, just kept coming, coming, coming. So right now, November 8th election, first of all, is going to be the first election in the history of Florida ever run where more Republicans are registered than Democrats. That's the first time. 